And some people say, you don't have to dress well. And you don't have to enjoy the dunya. And you don't have to do this. And if you are dressed well, they say it's kibr. And it's riya. And it's arrogance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is he to make haram? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has produced for mankind. Has produced for them to enjoy. Then Allah says, it's pleasure for them and enjoyment in this dunya. And they will have complete pure reward in the hereafter. So it's not decreasing their reward. But when it's done in halal, and when it's, when it's done with the right khuluq, and with the right man, and with the right behavior. So all these things that you need to pay attention. So everything starts from the bottom and moves up. Things start from the bottom and you start building to achieve the highest level. ويقول رحمه الله وينبغي له أن يجتهد في التجارة والكسب ليفضل على غيره ولا يفضل غيره عليه Then he is guiding you رحمه الله to tell you the things you need to do if you want to be amongst those amongst the people with the high determination So first he is starting to tell you you need to clean yourself That is how the Prophet وسلم, and your messenger did it That is how the greatest man ever lived did it that is Sayyid Waladi Adam did it. The head and the leader and the best of the sons of Adam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi cared about this stuff. So you have to care about them. You hear some people talking, the Ummah is drowning and the Ummah is being destroyed and being attacked. And here you come to talk about Tahara. And here you come to talk about Wudu. And here you come to talk about Ghusl. Everyone knows how to do it. And everyone knows how to do this stuff. Who are you? The Prophet ﷺ was tortured by the kuffar and yet he continued to teach the sahaba how to make wudu. The Prophet ﷺ was in war with the kuffar in the peninsula and he will bring the person and teach him how to pray musiyu salat. So what? Why you minute things? And those such people divide the deen into core and into qushur and uh, into core Something a major important and the other things is the cover. Something hash, something that is not, we don't have to pay too much attention to. So as you go along with them, you start seeing that 90% of the deen is qushur. And 90% of the deen is insignificant to them. And then what's important? 10%. And you can never reach these 10% and understand these 10% and perfect these 10% without going through the 90%. If the Salah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Ahd al-Ladhi Baynana wa Baynahum al-Salah, Faman Tarakaha Faqad Kafar, Al-Ahd al-Ladhi Baynana, the only reason that we are not fighting them, and the only reason that we, they are maintaining and, sa and saving and protecting their blood is the Salah. So he who abandons it, then he had committed Kufr. So how come you tell me not to teach Salah and how to pray? And which Salah is accepted without Tahar? And how is Tahara understood without knowing what is clean water and what is not? So everything is interconnected. And everything is interconnected. And it's all one unit that we have to take it all. And you have to submit to it all. That is the meaning of your name, the Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named you the Muslims. So very important to understand that. Oh, you who believe enter into Islam completely. So all these things they add up and don't tell me the deen is minors and majors. Minors and majors so I can look down and neglect the minors. And when the Sahaba used to stop in front of, of a fortress, or in a war and they are not getting through. They will start looking, what is it we're doing? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving us the victory. And most probably at the end it will be a sunnah that they have abandoned. Or they even forgot because they got busy with the war and whatever issues at hand. So very important that we look into all these things. So don't look at anything that come from the shari. And don't come look at anything that came from the Quran. And don't look at anything that came from the Messenger وسلم, as insignificant. Because this is disrespect to the Prophet. And talking about disrespect, when more than one brother have contacted me last week and they asked me if I was okay, I 
I said, I'm okay. And they asked me if I was in trouble. I said, no, I'm not in trouble. And they asked and they asked and all these things. And then when I started asking, why you're asking? One asked, well, maybe he had a bad dream about me or whatever. But the second person asked, then you start questioning, that means there's something going on. So when I started investigating more and asking more, someone who was in my lecture last week on Friday was upset and he thought I disrespected the Prophet wasallam by a statement I made. And the person or the people who called me didn't know what that statement. And then when I went further and started following the chain, it was very much the people who contacted me were the fourth generation. The fourth people, the fourth level in the chain. So I started getting further and further until I got to the second. And I never got in touch with the first. But the statement was that I said that Isa alayhi salam was mentioned in the Quran, his name more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were upset and they were thinking that I'm disrespecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whoever was at the lecture last week, he knows that the topic of that lecture was about shifa' and the intercession on the Day of Judgment. And how I talk that the special intercession and the greatest intercession and shafa' al ugma was only given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And throughout, I never stopped talking about such thing and about the greatness of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I talked about the shafa' of the Prophet sallallahu to be the first one to be allowed to open the door of paradise. And then they take such a statement and they say, I'm disrespecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who fights for the Prophet ﷺ? And who dedicates his time for the Prophet ﷺ? And who puts a lot of time and ignore a lot of his other concerns for the Prophet ﷺ? To come you to say that I disrespect Muhammad ﷺ? And that is the lack of knowledge. That is the ignorance. And that is the searching for faults, thinking they're false. And that is the grudge, and that is the hate that the believer needs to cleanse his heart from before he tries to take his way toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are humble with the believers, they're tough on the kuffar. That is the attitude of the believers and the mu'mineen. So Yaqul ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, وَيَنْبَغِي لَهُ أَنْ يَجْتَهِدَ فِي التِّجَارَةِ وَالْكِسْبِ لِيَفْضُلَ عَلَى غَيْرِهِ and it's very important, another issue is to get busy making his own living. Making his own living. To get busy making money. So he will be better than others. Not others better than him. And what he's trying to say by that is hadith, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yadul uliya khayrun min al sufna. The upper hand is better than the lower hand. The hand that gives is better than the hand that takes. So that is one of the, also the concerns, and one of the characters of the person who tries to reach the highest level. Because if he's dependent on others in his living, that means they control him. And they control what he can do and how much far he can go. So such thing, he, it has to be in his control. And that is very important. Very important to be independent. And very important. But at the same time, as we will see what he said, Rahimahullah, that such business, such searching for risk and for provision and for sustenance should not take him away from his obligation. Because then it becomes haram. And then it becomes makroh. And then it becomes disobedience in certain issues. So very important that he does that. Then he said, وَلِيَبْلُغَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ so he should go and seek to make some money so he can provide for himself and his responsibilities. But then he says, and to do as much that it will not stop him from seeking knowledge. And that is very significant. A lot of people work and that's all they can do. When you tell him about masajid, when you tell him about ilm, when you tell him about circle of knowledge, he says, I don't have time for that right now. 